In Search of Tomorrow, The Definitive Guide to 80s Sci-Fi is a four-plus-hour documentary with over 75 names already attached and more to come. The documentary will feature interviews with the creative forces behind the decade's biggest sci-fi hits. Back in Search of Tomorrow now and get immediate access to the Discord community to take part in live watch-alongs and special guest Q&As, as well as exclusive merchandise like Blu-rays, posters, t-shirts, and more. Follow the link in the description and back in Search of Tomorrow today. If you've been around my channel for any length of time, I'm sure you've heard me speak very highly of two movies. Those movies being Slugs and Pieces. Now, what those two movies have in common, aside from being absolutely friggin' awesome, is that they were both directed by the late Spanish filmmaker Juan Piquer Simón, a.k.a. J.P. Simon. So imagine my excitement when I heard that Vinegar Syndrome was releasing 1990's Cthulhu Mansion on Blu-ray, a movie co-written and directed by Mr. Simon. Now, I had been warned that it wasn't a great movie. Still, I stepped into Cthulhu Mansion eagerly, but with tempered expectations. After a drug deal gone bad, a group of street toughs take a carnival magician named Shandu, his daughter, and his mute assistant hostage. They decide to hold up in Shandu's mansion until the heat dies down. Unfortunately for them, the temperature is about to spike as they end up raising hell. Literally. Now I know what you're thinking, because I was thinking it too. How can a carnival magician afford a mansion? It's just one of many questions that will arise when watching Cthulhu Mansion. Questions that the movie never even attempts to answer. Kind of like, why is this movie called Cthulhu Mansion? Granted, there's a mansion, I get that, sort of. But, spoiler alert, the winged, octopus-headed great old one doesn't make an appearance. The movie is allegedly based on the writings of H.P. Lovecraft, however, I certainly wouldn't consider Cthulhu Mansion cosmic horror. It's really just a standard haunted house flick, where the evil is held at bay inside a sealed room down in the basement. But then again, the evil is still able to get out and influence people even with the door sealed. Again, one of those questions the movie never even begins to try to answer. Maybe the evil was just lying in wait for this specific night to strike, or maybe the evil just doesn't like young people wearing leather jackets. Maybe the evil is anti-leather. Maybe if the street toughs were wearing faux leather, the evil would have given them a pass. Here is Cthulhu Mansion in a nutshell. A character runs to a door, tries to open the door, but discovers that the door is locked. So they run to another door, try to open that door, but discover that that door is also locked. So they run back to the first door, try to open it, only to discover it's still locked. So they run back to the other door, try to open it, only to discover that yes, it is still locked. That's about 30 or so minutes of this movie. If I had a dollar for every time a character tries to open a locked door in this movie, I'd have roughly about the same amount of money that J.P. Simon had to make this movie. The problem with Cthulhu Mansion is that there's only about 15 minutes of actual story here, and that's being generous. But they try to stretch that 15 minutes of material to fit a 91-minute movie. It doesn't work. One thing I love about movies like Slugs and Pieces and even Simon's The Rift is the entertainment value. Are they great movies? Technically, no. Are they thoroughly entertaining and super fun to watch? Give me a hell yeah! I said give me a hell yeah! The cheesiness, the silliness, the sleaziness, the lack of self-aware at just how cheesy, silly, and sleazy the movies are. Cthulhu Mansion has none of that. It's just boring. And I mean... BORING!
Frank Finley certainly adds a bit of class to the proceedings and seems to be giving it his all as Shandu. The rest of the cast are okay, not that they're given very much to do, aside from being one-dimensional leather-clad bad guys and cannon fodder for the evil. Whatever the evil is here is kind of vague, but it's evil and evil is as evil does, and it was good to see Simon regular Frank Branna in the cast. As far as bloodshed and carnage are concerned, Cthulhu Mansion is pretty light. We get one character pulled into a refrigerator by a ridiculously large set of demon hands. Another character meets his demise courtesy of a shower that fills with blood. There are a couple of fairly well done nightmarish moments in the film, letting the evil reanimate the mutilated corpses of its victims so they can stalk the remaining survivors was a nice touch, and Simon blankets the exteriors of the mansion in a Fulci-esque fog. However, the vast majority of Cthulhu Mansion is made up of characters wandering around this large house, trying desperately to get out of it, and the ones that actually do escape the house only end up running right back into it and then trying to escape again. It all has to do with Shandu trying to conjure real magic from a poor man's Necronomicon, but instead he invokes a powerful evil that ends up ruining his life. Now, that's not a bad idea for a horror movie, but it's very, very underdeveloped, just like everything else in this movie. Now, I can't recommend Cthulhu Mansion, but if you are a fan of Juan Piquer Simone, I can recommend this release from Vinegar Syndrome because it contains a feature-length documentary about the life and career of Juan Piquer Simone. As far as picture quality and sound quality are concerned, this release is newly scanned and restored in 2K from 35mm archival film elements. I thought the movie both looked and sounded fantastic on this release from Vinegar Syndrome. I'd give the picture quality a solid four, if not a four and a half out of five, and I'd give the sound quality a solid four out of five. As far as extras are concerned, we get the feature length documentary, which is one hour, 41 minutes, and 20 seconds in length. It features interviews with friends, collaborators, and fans. It's subtitled and it jumps around a lot, but as a fan of the late director, I liked it a lot. We also get the special effects makeup magician and interview with Colin Arthur. It's 24 minutes and 42 seconds in length. Mr. Arthur discusses the shooting location of Cthulhu Mansion, working on a very tight budget, as well as some of the makeup effects he created for the film. He also discusses working with Juan Piquer Simone and much more. This is a solid release for Cthulhu Mansion from the fine folks over at Vinegar Syndrome. If you're a fan of Cthulhu Mansion, then this release is an absolute must. If you're a fan of Juan Piquer Simone, I would also recommend this release for that feature-length documentary about the director. We also get a very nice interview with the special effects makeup artist, and the picture quality and sound quality on this release were both fantastic. I'll post a link to Vinegar Syndrome's website down in the description. Go over and check them out. If you've seen Cthulhu Mansion, please let me know your thoughts on the film down in the comments section below. If you've purchased this release from Vinegar Syndrome, please let me know your thoughts on it down in the comments section below also. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care, and until next time, peace. A huge shout out to all my patrons and channel members. I appreciate your generosity and support of my channel. Become a patron today and join me for exclusive live streams, get early access to videos, and have a say in what movies I review on my channel. Become a channel member and get access to exclusive badges and emotes to use when I stream. Links are in the description. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.